My dog is so tired of me leaving her every morning and going to work. Each morning the past few weeks, she's just laid in the doorway trying to prevent me from even leaving. I understand. I mean, I really do. I work at a school and ask anyone that works at a school, they'll tell you that this time of year, about 10 months of fatigue pile on them all at once. Ask anybody that works at a school here at the end of the school year how they're doing and they'll tell you the same thing. I'm tired. Of course, even on good days, I need a little help to get going. My routine when I get to my office is to go to this special little corner over here where I make it a habit to spill coffee. I brew a fresh pot of disgusting bean water, and then I wander on over and get started on all the super important work things that I have to do. Life can be absolutely exhausting, even if you genuinely like what you spend most of your time doing. Don't let anybody tell you that old phrase, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life, because uh, sometimes work is just work, even if you love it. People who act like they believe that old statement are trying to seem perfect, flawless, unflappable, and trust me, everybody's got their flaps. Nope, you know what, I apologize for that statement, it made no sense, and it sounded gross. What I mean is that living, even at its simplest moments, can be exhausting. The key is to find the rewards in the midst of your tiredness. A few weeks ago, Tyler and I got the chance to do our first ever live panel. We were invited by the organizers of River City Toy Fest in Vicksburg to come speak about our personal experiences with collecting, with nerd culture, with photography and YouTube as outlets for our hobbies. The panel was freaking awesome. We already love River City Toy Fest after we stumbled upon it last year, but I can't tell you how much fun it was to be able to do a live, in-person event as guest speakers and to be able to interact with the people who stopped in to hear us speak. We settled on the topic of enjoying your hobbies in a world that tells you to always be doing more or buying more. It's amazing how tiring it can be when you feel like you have to do something that's supposed to be fun just so you can keep up with everybody. So we talked about how important it is to us to just have fun doing what we enjoy. And hey, we had a lot of fun talking about it. We met up for sandwiches a couple weeks later to recap and most importantly, just to have fun hanging out. How dare they start my car when I'm starting their video? <laughs> when I'm starting their video. <laughs> well, all right, shut it down. What's your go-to Jersey Mike's order? Mm. I'm going no, cheesesteak. Okay, I'm going Chipotle chicken. Mm. Although I'm looking at it, and this is Looks some like very cheesesteak to me. <laughs> some very beefy chicken. <laughs> I believe it's chicken, ma'am. Wait a second. Oh, well. well. How's yours? Is it chicken? Nope. Neither is mine. Yeah, I mean, mine's still really tasty. I'm not I'm not complaining at all. It's just not chicken. It's just not chicken, so it's a little bizarre. But mm -hmm. Do you get it Mike's way, or do you just get the... I guess with the cheesesteak, that wouldn't make any sense. Nah, I just yeah. use it the normal way. Yeah, peppers and onions and whatnot. Minus the peppers. Why? kind of defeats the purpose of a cheesesteak, right? Sometimes you're just not feeling peppers. Okay, fair enough. Oh my God, Amy Jo Johnson's gonna be here, I'm so nervous. I know, I know, your childhood crush, Amy Jo Johnson's gonna be here, and my childhood crush, the Demon Kane, is gonna be here, so. Dude, I'm so nervous, I really wanna meet her, but I don't know if I can. Because you're married? Because I'm just nervous, no. Oh. I mean, it's not like I'm gonna go to the convention and get married to Amy Jo Johnson, right? I mean, it Wait, depends. is that an option? It might be. This is a story I've never told anybody. Okay. So when I was eight-ish, my friend and I, who I won't name, joined the Power Ranger fan club. All right. Solely because we thought maybe there was a chance we get to meet Amy Jo Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> and so we had the idea to call the official fan club phone number, which really was like not a Power Ranger thing. It was just like a business office. Yep. We didn't know that at the time. And so, my friend's like, let me do the talking. And I'm like, okay, cool, go for it. And, Smart uh, friend to not <laughs> let you be the guy. Well, and so he calls and he's like, yeah, hey, we want to meet the Pink Ranger. And they're like, I'm sorry, we can't do that. And he's like, darn, I got this. He's like, okay, well, I'm going to put a pipe bomb in your car if you don't let me meet the Pink Ranger. Okay, never mind. I'm sorry. 
I was like, <laughs> I don't think you can say that. Yeah, I take it back when I said that was a smart friend. Like, I don't, I don't think you can say that, man. He's like, it's fine. They'll never find us. And we just hung up. And mm -hmm. you know, to Joseph's credit, they never found us. I want to go on the on the record here, <laughs> saying this is the first time I've ever heard this story. I'm not involved. I think there might still be some more in there. I think. <laughs> Did you just toss it down? Nailed it. Like smash that, dude. <coughs> they don't call me the Smash Brother for nothing. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> God. <sighs> I was gonna say, dude, your lugs don't work that well. You gotta breathe it something. I almost just died right there on camera. It was not worth the gag. <laughs> so we were able to do uh, a panel yeah. at River City Toy Fest a few weeks back. Facts of life. First impression of River City Toy Fest, which we stumbled upon last year. Mm -hmm. Big fans of in general, but first impression of it this year. Shockingly nice and way bigger than the prior years. You know, mm -hmm. last year it was like, in one room, and this year it was in one, well, one one room, but one <laughs> much, bigger much room larger. is the thing about it. It was and a much larger room. And better lighting. It was a well-lit yeah. room. And I particularly like where we did the panel because uh, <coughs> we were upstairs, mm -hmm. and there was glass. We looked down on everyone like they're peasants, yep. and it was awesome. Which ultimately they are to us. They did hail us as king. They threw, well, they threw stuff at the glass, <laughs> I'm assuming that was gifts. Yeah, I'd go back if they asked me. They won't. They won't. Sure. They, they definitely learn. will not ask us. <laughs> they, again. they learned their lesson. But I, I would go back. It was awesome. A lot of what we ta ended up talking about mm -hmm. was li living life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and being busy. I'm putting my hand in here so people know it's me talking right now. We don't do that for a living. We don't do like we have regular jobs, and then we do stuff like this mm -hmm. for fun and collecting for fun and a lot of what we talked about was like how do you keep perspective on that i mean how do you use that your hobbies or a, a live stream with like jess or whoever or your, mm -hmm. you know when you're just exhausted <laughs> it's a good question uh i usually just don't <laughs> i usually just don't do you find it just like do you ever find like when you do something do you find it to be like a good I don't know, uh, re break from the, the, yeah, the stuff that makes this. you fatigued? Or, you yeah, know. we talked about this for at, at the mm -hmm. River City Toy Fest mm -hmm. 2022. You got it. That was it. Good job. But, you know, it's like, this is for this is a hobby for fun. Yeah. We've both done this in ways that's not fun, <laughs> right. that felt like a job. And so I think I've just come to a point in life where if it's just not fun, I'm just not doing it. Yeah. Because I'm doing enough not fun work right. <laughs> in life that I'm like, this is my hobby. If it's not going to be fun or relaxing, I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We also talked a lot of in the panel about how... We did. Yeah, thank you. Just want my hands to be seen. That way you know who's talking. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just good. That's good filmmaking. That's just good filmmaking. This is what we call Gorilla Filmmaking 101. That's it. One of the things we also talked about is how so much of what we do mm -hmm. um, with why we started doing YouTube stuff and why we kind of keep coming back even in whatever limited basis we do it on is because of the community yeah. aspect of it. Yeah. And like, yeah, exactly what you're saying. Like at this point in our lives, like we got family, we got jobs, we got all of that. Yeah, we got jobs. We work. We technically work. Yeah, we got jobs. We got plenty of jobs. Plenty of jobs. We got four or five different jobs. Everybody got jobs, jobs here. I mean, dude, I gotta take out the trash. I gotta, you know, empty the dishwasher. <laughs> I gotta just... take the photos of the toys. I got, you know, I got jobs. But the point is, like this, like if we're wherever we're not busy, like what? It'd be, it's so much more fulfilling to not immediately jump into a. a another hustle and a completely unnecessary hustle yeah a hustle that's a good yeah, word this ain't good no one. hustle no it's a it's a lot more rewarding to spend our time either with friends and family or in a hobby that we actually enjoy yeah. or like 
making a video when we yeah. feel like making a video and not yeah. like being like we have yeah. the release schedule demands you know demands demands that we demands do it, so. it. you got to put your hand in there we couldn't tell that, that it was demands it. thank you the topic of enjoying our hobbies and how we share our enjoyment of them was important for us to talk about because it's gotten us to where we are now. I mean, years ago, we tried to have a YouTube channel that was full of super scheduled out programming that would please the almighty algorithm. And it didn't accomplish anything except burning us out really quickly and kind of making us hate what it was that we loved to do and what we wanted to share. The channel now isn't as active, I guess you could say, as it might have been when we first started, but it's healthier. It's so much healthier, and it's healthier because we focus on doing things we enjoy, like these dumb little vlogs or streams with other collectors. It's healthier because we have an active group of, well, all of you who comment, who message us, who hang out with us. We have friends, and I think that's the point. What got us started on this whole journey was a desire to make videos that connect with a community that share our interests. It wasn't to become popular or famous through some constant chasing of clicks and views, because that will just wear you out and wear you down. I mean, what's the point of doing something that takes this level of effort if you're not going to enjoy it? What's the point of doing, I mean, anything if you don't have a community to connect with in the process? I guess what I'm trying to say is thanks. Thanks for being here for us. Thanks for being here with us, because that is what makes these tired days worthwhile. That makes it make a lot of sense. I really need to trim my fingernails for how long? Uh, I never have that problem. Because you bite them? Are you a biter? Yeah. yeah. Oh, do you not have fingernails? They're, yeah. I was oh, born, born without them. <laughs>